from a standing start in central London, you can be deer-stalking faster and more cheaply than you can get a game of tennis or a game of golf. With the row rut imminent or maybe underway by the time you watch this, here's what happens when deer-stalker Al Kamatov does just that. And here we are driving lovely uh, roads of the Surrey. Unbelievable thing is that this place is only uh, 40 miles from the center of London. Of course, it's, uh, nobody really could expect that you can stalk deer in such a near proximity of the uh, London, but it's a big luxury. For example, today I was working in city and I left my office at Victoria at 5.30, so I arrived home at uh, 6 45 left home at 7 we've been here at 7 40 and uh, here we are we're going out and uh, well, I'm sure we're going to be having the very resultive very productive uh, stalking so let's hope for the best we have met Al before stalking red deer at Ardner Merkin with Neil Rowntree this evening, Al meets up with Surrey-based stalking guide Matt Remnant at Cattershall Farm near Godalming. At this time of year, with the bucks showing themselves, Matt has plenty of stalking clients. Shall we? Excellent. Let's, okay. When you're ready, sir. Now we need buck. Yes. Standing broadside. Perfect. Beautifully for 20 minutes. <laughs> also. Tell me what happened yesterday. Well, up here? Yeah, no, no, no. What you said, you're like, what happened? What, here? Yeah, you said, like, you took a client and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my Dutch friends came up and everything. Uh -huh. And uh, just, just, just wasn't quick enough. He could have had a lovely six pointer up here, but he chased a doe, stopped twice, didn't shoot, and. He was thinking too much. He was waiting for the right shot. He knows that we're filming, you know. If a robot does that, we'll be happy. We will come back to Al's evening. First, let's meet Matt and his father David properly in the pub the following day. Like many of the stalkers who work in the green areas near Britain's biggest cities, they have a long history of deer management. And, uh, <clears throat> we know the ground very well. We have quite an area quite a large area. How big is the area we, or uh, you, you manage deer at? Well, 3,000 acres. And be, we've been stalking deer here, yeah, probably with rifles, etc., for the last 55 years. 55 years, yeah. The remnants have more experience of deer stalking than most golf and tennis pros know about their games. Back to Al's stalking evening, and it is that experience which brings Al in contact with his first buck. There is still light and there are still bucks on the move. Matt takes Al to another field on this farm where he has seen some activity. The pair of them are in luck. Two bucks are fighting at one end of the field. Two bucks fighting. We shot one. Another one was didn't know that we shot him. We think the second shot a bit behind. Maybe we're lucky we had a free box today. Let's go and see. Matt knows that that leap in the air is a classic heart shot reaction, and he's not surprised to find the buck a few feet into the woodland. It's adrenaline that carried it there. Al is delighted. This is bloody awesome. Three bucks, gents. This is why I call Sari Buck religion. <laughs> this one is old buck, yeah? This one is old buck, so. 
There's not many times you get opportunity to shoot two bucks fighting each other. Yeah. If you can shoot straight and you want to go deer stalking near London, we have put a list of stalking guides whom we know in the description of this film. If you're not a rifle shot, first take up the sport on one of the many rifle ranges around London. But above all, know this, it's fun, it's delicious, and you're doing the landscape and the local deer population a favour.